Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, I like to cover the the uh, the Alpine Front in World War One. is usually forgotten. Uh, and it's very interesting because the uh, uh, essentially the Austro-Hungarians, with some German help, uh, against the Italians. Of course, in the first war, the Italians were on the Allied side. Um, but whereas I root for the Central Powers always, I, I kind of in the Alpine Front, I'm kind of rooting for the Italians. The Italians and the Aditi, right? The elite assault troops, the shock troops, uh, were basically uh, uh, formed to try to. Uh, a, st a stalemate is kind of hard to, to put it. They were at a real disadvantage. The high ground on the Alpine front literally was up on the mountains. The Austro Hungarians and the Germans had a much better position, and the Italians, uh, especially with their. The commander Cardona. Uh, uh, you wonder if the guy was working for the other side. That general, uh, they lost a lot of guys trying to take these positions. But the Aditi were essentially uh, they were formed from. If you remember that review I did, the Death Company, uh, they, they used to have. You used to have the actual the they were called the uh, the Death Companies. Uh, the engineers with the armor that would cut the wire and, and go in. And then you also had the exploratory groups that were kind of like raiding parties. They would they were, they were, would just use daggers and grenades and they had those crazy science fiction looking helmets. Well, uh, they had proven their worth. The one, the one group uh, in the famous St. Osvaldo battle well, had almost been wiped out. There was like 30 guys left. The Aditi's were kind of formed from that idea, but in a more organized fashion. Uh, and at the end, they actually, even at the Caporetto disaster, these guys fought really well. And eventually, they won. The Italians won, okay, uh, the, the war, right? Uh, what happened afterwards, of course, is a different story, but in here you can see the Aditi's, right? The, the dagger, right? Look at that, seven inch thing you know the dagger was the big thing with these guys uh the dagger and the grenades were the preferred weapons of the uh of the early exploratory groups and then the Arditi okay, getting close uh and of course havoc right yeah. the cool picture there's uh gabriel denunzio more on him later but look at these dudes right? so now yeah just going through here Great Osprey book, uh, all the details, lots of pictures, right? And you, see, you get to see, you know, of course, the maps. You see the early, I mean, the, the battle line was kind of like the same throughout the war. It was very hard for the Italians to really do anything. But let's just, uh, like here, the Ardito, the Ardito's Ten Commandments. Ardito, right? The ardent one, right? Your name means courage, force, and loyalty. Your mission is victory at any cost. Be proud to show the whole world that nobody can resist the Italian soldier. Right? Think of the jewels you are defending with your valor, valor, the freedom of your families, families, the beauty of your country, the wealth of your nation. This would give you invincible strength. Right? I just I love reading this stuff. Right? To win numbers and weapons do not count. Discipline and boldness are the sole values. Discipline is the most beautiful and the highest moral force. Boldness is the cold, firm will to show the enemy the superiority wherever, whenever, whenever and wherever. Huh? I like this. When attacking, use your hand grenades and dagger, the true weapons of every Ardito. When defending the terrain, you have won. Use your rifle and your machine gun. Protect your machine guns if you want them to protect you. Right? Cover the sound of the enemy's charge with that of your machine guns. Then you will see the charge fail and the enemy flowing like cut wheat. Right? If you catch the enemy in the rear, throw him into terror and disorder. One courageous man is worth a hundred men. An Italian Adidas worth a thousand enemy soldiers. Right? The terror your enemy experienced before you is your best weapon. Be sure to further your fame. Be fierce with the standing enemy. Be generous with the falling one. Ah. Oh. What is this, honor? What the hell are these guys, nuts? Right. Do not aspire to any other prize than the smile of the beautiful Italian women you defend with your courage. They will cover you with flowers and will bestow kisses on you when you return victorious. 
proud of your masculinity, O oh, beloved sons of great Italy. Oh, you know, <laughs> these maniacs. Anyway, I go on a tangent. This is like, like the great photos. You got the war here, of course. Right, Austro Hungarian Empire. It's like another planet like a century ago. Um, of course, the IDs, they got. It's just, they got special privileges, right? They got better food, right? Some of the army guys resented them, but these guys were maniacs. And they, a lot of them died, so, yeah. And you got the cool, they always had the cool insignias. The flame, they, they particularly with the uh, insignias, the f the flames and the, the gladius and the wreaths, right? These are going back to Roman days. And of course... The Arditi, the, the famous symbol of the Arditi, just like with the fry corps and many of the German soldiers, the skull and the crossbones, right? Associated with pirates, but in this case, you know, what's the weapons? Oh, what a beautiful thing. Look at the dagger. Beautiful. And of course, the funny, the grenades, right? These things that were rarely lethal. They were kind of more like sh sh flashbang grenades to scare the hell out of people. Before you went in, right? Of course, the great artwork, the painted artwork. Um, also, we forget the first submachine gun used in the army was the Italians. Look at this crazy thing. You know, the Italians innovated a lot of things. So you have the different, you have the, the death company, these brave dudes. Right? And you got them the training and throwing the grenades around. Like, what the hell are you doing? Alright. I love this. I love this metal. Look at this. The the uh, the Arditi, the famous skull with the knife and the teeth. And you got the one here with the Roman wreath. Yeah, look how cool that is. Yeah. Anyway, now of course we got the famous Grab Gabriel D'Annunzio, right? Uh, after the war, one of the issues was that Italy didn't get. What it, what it wanted, right? It was wanted the territories that Austria-Hungary had had that were Italian populations. Filmy was one of them. Uh, the Nunzio, who was uh, already an older man who had flown uh, aircraft missions uh, in combat, led a lot of these former Arditi guys to take this place in Austria-Hungary for Italy. Uh, that's cool. Look at that cool... Look at that cool... Uh, symbol, a lot of very artistic. Of course, the the gladius with the uh, wreaths again, but this guy was crazy, man. This guy was also the forerunner of what? Ooh, what are the ideas associated with? Anyway, look at these fucking dude. Imagine you had guys like this now in Europe. You would have no problems. No problems. Right. And you get the cool hair like this. A somewhat daring postcard, right? Yeah. Hmm. Ah, Bella, look at that. <laughs> what, what the hell is that? What is that doing here? Ah, anyway. So, um, great uh, book. Let's see. He's one-handed. Of course, after the war, like I said. There you go, I love this picture. Hey, you got the freaking daggers ready. Hey. But... A useful partner to this book is just in general the Italian army of World War One. Okay, uh, the interesting thing is that, like, like for example, you still have cavalry guys with helmets and lances in the beginning, right? But there he goes, man. You you killed. You got a lot of you guys killed, bro. You know, can't can't count and start, but you know the Italians are of course considered primitive, a joke, and whatever, but. The Italian soldiers were, even the British that visited, it was the same story. Oh, they're not led well, they're not organized well, but the Italian soldiers from all over the place, uh, you know, many couldn't even understand the dialects. The Sardinians literally spoke another language, but the soldiers themselves paid the least of anybody and, uh, and, and pretty much not given any privileges. The officers were like, looked down on them. These men still fought really hard. So, yeah, warfare in the high Alps. Right? The point I'm making is that, right, the rank and file. Uh, right, I, I like this. The high levels of illiteracy in the ranks meant the insufficient suitable men 
Service so NCOs. That was always the big thing. The non-commissioned officer was an advantage to the uh, English speaking and Germanics. Right? Large variations in regional dialects made communication difficult, and some groups such as the Sardinians were virtually unintelligible to the others. Right? So, and in fact, they get a good commander. They get a Napoli Don of Spanish family background. Remember, remember the history of Napoli. Right, miserably paid and fiercely disciplined, the Italian soldier had the least opportunities. Right, uh, strong red wine and an occasional visit to a grim field brothel were the best he could expect. Shit, that's better than we have now, though, isn't it? <laughs> right. So, I need to cut these alpini, yeah. But the point I want to make with this before I end this video is, of course, the Ardenis are, are in, you know, in, in the frame of this, but. The artwork here, you see the Italian army, you see, of course, you already have your Bersaglieri, you have your, your cavalry, you have your soldier with the number on his head, right? Um, Alpinis, you have, already have all these divisions here, but the, the technology is interesting. Look at this mortar, man. This thing looks cool as hell. You already have machine gun, what? Uh, autonomous machine gun companies. And you got, of course... Here we go. We got the assault troops, the Arditis, the early exploratory groups with that cool symbol there. My man's got brass knuckles and he's got this crazy looking helmet here. You got the death company engineers. Look at these guys. Uh, it's just... In a lot of weight, look at that thing. That thing looks cool as hell. It looks like a science fiction thing. And you got this. What, you know, it was an uh, interesting. The Italian army is interesting. The first one is to use armored vehicles in combat, armored cars, the Italians, right? So, and look at the, look, look what these guys got to do. They got to go up the damn mountains to get their weapons. Anyway, of course, you had uh, the artillery. The Italian artillery was always underrated. They were actually very good artillery men, probably better artillery men than the Germans were, to be frank. And they had self-propelled artillery before anybody else. So these are the backwards Italians, uh, you know, uh, innovating many things, but just getting left behind just by timing, right? This is interesting. It's very interesting, the, the Italian army in the First World War. And just, here we go. Here's the exploratory companies. These become, these inspire the Aditis, right? Look at this shit. This is like science fiction warriors on Mars or something. Look at that. That's right. You know, the reverse grip. So... Be pretty useful. The reverse, reverse grip would be very useful in this kind of combat. So, right, right. The exploratory six-point star badge. Now, these are what you read in that Death Company book, and of course you have also the Company della Morte, right? The Death, the uh, engineers. These dudes. Oh my God! Squad, squads of the four operating small. Including explosive experts, right? Their skill and courage in cutting the enemy wire on the fire was legendary. Even after artillery developed methods of destroying barbed wire and tying elements more efficiently, they still needed these guys, especially, you know, in, in the mountain terrain. So, anyway, why am I looking at this World War I Italian stuff? Right? Well, eventually, uh, this war leads to certain things, and there's certain people involved, okay? Both in the artistic uh, community, right? Obviously, I'm going to go over these at some point. But also, they form the core of another, oh, another group that rises to the fore when they march on Rome in 22. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're focusing on the Italians now. Uh, but a jokes, but in a lot of ways, uh, they still carry the honor of, of Europe to, to this day right? in terms of being a, a based. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we shall cover these at some other point, but not now. We're... That's right. Yeah, if you had like just a 16th of these guys now, we would take care of a lot of problems, at least in Europe anyway. So and maybe we could drop a couple off in uh, Baltimore or Camden. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. Good night.